Hello everyone, welcome back to McCamey Farm and Outdoors. And today we're going to be talking about a whole house generator setup. And this is what I personally use. Um, and I've, I've used this a little bit in the past, but I've, I've got an addition that I want to add to it um, that I just got in the mail. Uh, and you know, it's spring season, lots of storms around. We've, we've already had a lot of storms throughout the winter that have took out our power uh, a few times. And uh, for us, our important thing is keeping our refrigerators and freezers up and going. We have a lot of uh, beef products that we keep in a freezer out in the garage. Uh, of course, a lot of food that's in our refrigerator freezer and refrigerator. And of course, as most of you know, right now food prices are crazy high. And if we had a prolonged uh, power outage, that's something that we um, would really struggle with if we lost the amount of meat and food products that we have in our refrigerators and freezers. So a uh, solution I came up with for that uh, a while back, I'm going to be showing you today how we do our uh, generator backup here on our home. Um, and a good example of this is, you know, most of the time our utility company they're very good about reliability and they get our power back on very quickly. Um, but back last summer, uh, we actually had the, you know, the last power pole on the line that, that our service connects to in transformer, it snapped, fell over completely. We were without power for almost uh, 48 hours. And you know, that was just because we were on the end of the line. We were the only house affected so it took a little bit for the utility to get get us back online so in that instance i think we ran you know on the generator for that entire 48 hours and it, it kept our refrigerators and freezers going kept the lights on in the house kept some fans going so um, yeah just want to show you a little bit of what what i did here to make my system work and maybe this is something you can incorporate into your house um, yeah let's dig into it and see what we've got Okay, so here's the approach that, that I took, and, and like I said, this is going to differ for, uh, you know, everyone's um, particular panel and how their house is set up. But, so I have, you know, my main power feed coming underground from the utility pole and comes up to this uh, meter base, which also has a breaker panel included in it. Uh, so if you open this up. As you can see, the the main, you know, service disconnect from the pole comes in here, and it feeds through this panel out into my house, which then goes under the floor and and serves my my 200 amp breaker panel inside the house. So this is kind of from the meter through this service into my house. So this is my main service disconnect from the utility company. And then I've got a uh, hot tub circuit here, um, a RV circuit that feeds my camper shed, also a 20 amp circuit going to the chicken lot. And then I've installed this 30 amp breaker from my generator. So let's, uh, let's open this up and show you a little bit more about what we've got in here. Okay, so here's a little bit better look of what we've got here. Um, like I said, these, these wires up here, these come in from the meter, feed this 200 amp disconnect right here. Then it feeds this bus panel right here that then comes out and drops down and feeds into the house and feeds our main, our main breaker panel. So this kind of isolates everything coming in from the interior panel. Uh, and as you can see here, this is our, our hot tub, 60 amp panel. Um, and then over here, what I have done, I've got a 30 amp breaker that I use as my generator disconnect switch. Um, and I use this to basically, each, each circuit here will feed one side of the bus bar so I can, I can capture this left side and this right side, which in turn feeds both sides of my my bus here. So I'm 120 here, 
120 volts over here feeding out into my main panel uh, so what i have done uh, to make this a little bit universal and multifunctional, i came over here and i put basically this is a an rv um, hookup right here and so it comes in here this is a 50 amp is what this is rated for so it comes in here branches out and feeds both both legs of this 30 amp breaker right here so each leg is 120 volts and it feeds both buses so that way i can feed the entirety of my panel and my generator that i use i've got a 3500 watt predator generator it's rated for 30 amps so that's why i chose a 30 amp breaker with 30 amp wire size 10 10 gauge wire and then i'm also coming out of it feeding the neutral on my neutral bar and and grounding as well so what this allows me to do and i'll show you here in just a moment this allows me to use the same uh, cord here to power my house and also use that same cord with my generator to feed my camper if i'm out where there's no power um, we go to a lot of races and there's usually camp spots with no power hookups so i'm, I'm relying on the generator in those instances so this allows me to use the same cord in my generator to power my rv uh, because my my rv has this exact same plug that's how i uh, found this plug um, this is exa an exact replacement that i actually have on my camper so like i said it's identical so it works out really great it serves two purposes uh, with the same cord so what i purchased uh, on amazon is this twist lock cord i brought this as an actual it's a, a set it comes with the the, the plug-in the female side it also comes with the male cord side and then i bought some some 10 gauge number four wire i just bought i think eight feet of it to wire this up to so and like i said this is the same end that i have on my power cord for my rv so exact same thing here so this can go right here just goes in and twists and then i'm able to hook this up to my generator so this is the a 30 amp twist lock that I have for my generator and as you'll notice I only have three prongs here that's because the generator I have is not a 120 240 volt it's only 120 so it's only got one circuit that comes out and so what I've done here inside my cord is where this main power feed right here comes in I actually splice those two wires together so I'm coming out of here and joining those two 120 volt circuits together as one feeding it out of my generator and like i said I've, I've ran this here on my house it works just fine and this is actually some if you have an rv and you have an adapter this is also what will work from uh, a 30 amp to a 50 amp adapter on your rv so it's not something that's new it's something that uh, that's out there and it's just what I chose to do in my particular instance now if you did have a larger generator that had a 120 volt or 240 volt twist lock four prong then you're just going to land each wire on each individual circuit and it gives you more capacity but that's a larger generator uh, like I said I have the 3500 watt predator does just fine in this instance because i'm only powering my necessary uh, needed circuits i'm not trying to power everything in the house just my needed circuits so works out just fine for me it's a good reliable generator quiet uh, cheap to operate so that's that's why i prefer it and what i'm going to be uh, installing today is this interlock kit that i've bought from geninterlock.com i'll leave a link for this in the description 
uh, and this one is specific to my panel. Uh, they offer it for all different types of panels and uh, what, whatever circumstance you might fall in. So, um, but yeah, this one is made for my particular panel for this particular orientation on my main service disconnect. And how this is gonna work, it's gonna go on to my panel cover. And then once I put that panel cover on it, it only allows one of these to work at a time. Therefore, you can't back feed uh, your generator to the power pole, which would, um, you know, could power up the utility lines and, and put linemen in, in harm's way. So we don't want that. So this is the the best way to do this if you're going to have this manual transfer switch type situation. So it also comes with some stickers that you put on the outside of your panel. That way, if there is a utility company comes up and looks during a power outage or a storm, they know that this panel is being fed through the generator and everything should be good through this interlock kit. So that's that's what I wanted to get. I finally found one of these that, that fit my panel. So I wanna get this installed so everything is uh, as it should be. Okay, so let's open this up here and see what we've got in the kit like I said we've got some stickers here that you put on the outside of the panel uh, got some instructions here for the interlock kit um, and as you can see here I don't know if you can read or not but suitable for use in accordance with article 702 of the National Electrical Code so this is this is approved um, like I said it just makes this to where uh, we're, we're covered and, and, and doing this properly. And like I said, geninterlock.com, they've got all different types designed and manufactured in the USA. All right, so I don't think my installation could have went any easier. Uh, there's already, there's a hole here in this breaker from the factory and my interlock slides right over top of my 30 amp breaker here kind of snaps right over top of it and then we add this screw that comes with the kit right there in place and that's that's it as far as installation of the interlock uh, so like i said my particular installation couldn't be any simpler We're basically just taking the dead front off screwing this interlock on and that's it so we're ready to put the ready to put the dead front back on okay let's slide our dead front back on put it back in place That's it for my installation on my particular panel. Um, now how this works is this interlock right here, this little slide bar will not allow you to basically energize this bus through this breaker. It won't allow it to open uh, because this rail is here in the way. So you can't turn this breaker on while this is in place unless you turn off your main service disconnect. So when you turn that off, that allows this rail to slide up, which in turn allow, which in turn allows you to open this breaker and feed the panel from your generator. So very simple concept, uh, just has to be made for your specific application. So like I said, power's out, you come out here, you turn off your service disconnect from the utility company and that will allow you to open this interlock, turn this breaker on, which will supply the panel with your power from your generator. So I will demonstrate next how I'll simulate a power outage. I'll turn this off, open the interlock, turn this 30 amp breaker on, 
and then we'll hook up to the generator and get everything powered up. Okay, let's go through a little simulation of what I would do in a power outage. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my double pole breakers uh, just so we have light before I go ahead and transfer everything over. So like I said, I always go through and, and turn off all my two pole breakers. Um, I'm on all electric here. So that's, that's my, my furnace, my condenser, water heater, dryer, oven and my range so everything else here is receptacles and lights which will all be powered when i switch over to generator so let's go outside now and simulate a power outage and we'll get everything running on the generator all right so we're back out here at the meter and panel and i'm going to do the same thing here i'm going to turn off this two pole which this feeds my hot tub around back um, and then I'm also going to power off my RV shed. That way I'm not pulling anything from my camper, uh, which there shouldn't be anything on in it anyway, but just want to make sure. And then I'm going to kill the main disconnect from the utility pole. So that's everything that would simulate a power outage. And in this case, this is what I would do during a power outage is turn this main disconnect off and then that allows us to bring this interlock up which will allow us to turn this 30 amp over so as you can see this with that being off it allows this interlock to come up and clears the the breaker so now we're we're basically on generator power through this two pole breaker which then in turn goes out to my plug-in. And as you can see here, it doesn't allow us to rack this breaker over to feed both. It'll only allow one at a time. So that's, uh, that's basically the concept of the interlock. It won't allow but one or the other. You can't, you can't be on both at the same time. Okay, so let's get the generator going get everything hooked up and then we'll report back so i just wanted to demonstrate that that interlock while you know everything was quiet and the generator wasn't running but typically what i do i'll leave this off until i get my power supply hooked up to the generator so we'll come over here to the twist lock So no, no load on the generator right now. As you can see, we're zero amps, uh, zero volts, 124 volt output. So now we'll come over here and turn our breaker on. As you can hear it kick up there. So now we're, we're running on generator power right now in the house. We are 6.8 amps. That's what we're pulling right now. 836 volts. So we are, you know, it's during the day, so there's not a lot on. Uh, like I said, we do have one refrigerator freezer in the kitchen, and then also a large upright freezer in the garage that we keep most of our meat in so now to come back off generator say our power's restored and we're good to go so we're gonna turn that breaker off which then that takes the, the generator power off this panel um, and now we can go back as you saw whenever i turn that over that interlock dropped down so now i can go back to main utility power so now the house is back on full utility power and we're good to go so now i'll let the let the generator uh, have a little cool down there turn it off and we're back to normal so now i'll come back inside here and go ahead and start start adding load back to my panel getting my my two pole breakers 
back online. And then we're, we're back to normal outside of going around and of course resetting clocks and restarting computers. Uh, we're, we're not really uh, down very long or inconvenienced at all. And like I said, this may not work for everyone, um, but in my instance, this works just, just fine. I keep the generator in the garage, the cord's handy. If we lose power, I can be back online within five minutes. Um, and like I said, I'm pretty reliant on electrical because I, I have no gas appliances. I'm strictly electrical in my house. Uh, but of course I have, all my lights are LED lights, which help a lot. Um, have very high efficient appliances, which also help. Um, and I have a, I have a propane tank with some gas logs for a fireplace. So if it's the winter time and we have a, you know, a really rough storm, snowstorm, and we're without power, we're going to have heat, um, uh, from those gas logs. Summertime, you know, which we typically don't have a lot of storms in the summertime and we would be without AC, but we would still have our lights. We could still, you know, function as normal and we're not going to lose any of our our perishable items in the refrigerator or freezer. Um, so for the money, in my opinion, this is the best bang for my buck. Um, a whole house generator system that would transfer and power everything in the house were, you know, upwards of eight to $10,000 just, just in the, the generator itself and the, the infrastructure to run it. So to me, you know, the generator I have, I think it was $750. And I use it for camping, not just for, you know, power in the house, but for camping. And then I'm, you know, around a hundred to $110 in everything else. The interlock kit, the plug-in adapter, uh, breaker, the cord. Okay, so, so to me, um, this is the best bang for my buck. So I, I hope that you find this helpful and maybe give you some ideas kind of get your get your wheels turning on what you can do on your your you know situation um i'll leave links in the description to everything that i have used in this little project and feel free to ask any questions comments i'll do my best to uh to answer what you've what you've got but i think that's going to do it for this video i appreciate you sticking around and watching and have a great day